Hola, first graders. Happy Friday. I hope that you all have had a wonderful week. Let's go ahead and get started with today's lesson. Remember, you will need your writing journal and a pencil for this lesson. So if you don't have those materials with you right now, go ahead and pause the video right now. Go grab your things and then press play to continue on with the lesson. What is it that we're working on today? Well, let's take a look at our writing goal. We're gonna be doing lots of things today. So remember our ruler word, we want to stay focused. Okay. Our objective or our writing goal for today is I can hear, visualize, and act out poems. I can explore and generate movement words. And remember, we learned about this on Wednesday. Movement words are called verbs. And use them to create a poem. I can move around the room responsibly. There's lots of things that we're going to be doing today during writing. So we're going to go ahead and reread this goal again. And I would like you to repeat after me. Capiche? Awesome. Here we go. I can hear, visualize, and act out poems. I can explore and generate movement words and use them to create a poem. I can move around the room responsibly. All right, first graders, thank you. I heard everyone participating right now. Let's go ahead and keep going. Let's go ahead and review what we've done this week so far. On Monday, we created a KWL chart where we answered the question, what is poetry? We thought about what we already knew, what we wanted to know, and what we learned. We also read poems. We took the time to stop and think about what we visualized, what mental image or picture we built in our brains by listening to these poems. We also acted out poems responsibly on Wednesday. We picked a safe spot around our home and we were able to act out what we heard in the poem. We also made a list of movement words or another name for that is verbs on a chart. Let's remind ourselves about movement words and what they mean. Remember, another name for movement words or an action word is verbs and so it, it has to do with you doing an action like if you're talking if you're running you're walking and we listened to some poems on wednesday where we were able to identify different movement words that were presented in the poem here i have made a list of words that we talked about on wednesday like jump wiggle hop slide leap and bounce we're going to listen to a poem today, and we're going to listen to this poem two times. But before we read this poem, I would like you to become familiar with two words that we're going to hear in the poem. One of the words is cartwheeling. Can you say cartwheeling? Awesome. When you do a cartwheel, you're standing on your hands, and then you turn your body like a wheel. Some of you have done this at the park. Some of you do this in gymnastics. The next word that I would like to introduce to you is wrestling. Can you say wrestling? Awesome. When you wrestle, you are pushing and grabbing. And there's also a sport where people wrestle as well. And you might have seen it on TV or know a friend or someone who has done it before. The third thing that we're going to do is we're going to visualize. We're going to make a mental image or a movie in our brains. One thing that you can do to help you visualize today while you're listening to this poem is closing your eyes. We do this in room 116 all of the time. I know that room 114 and 115 do it as well. And if you really want to stay focused, go ahead and just kind of bend your head down like this, keeping your eyes closed and having your ears ready to listen. This poem is called Lessie. When my friend Lessie runs, she runs so fast. 
I can hardly see her feet touch the ground. She runs faster than a leaf flies. She pushes her knees up and down, up and down. She closes her hands and swings her arms. She opens her mouth and tastes the wind. Her coat flies out behind her. When Lessie runs, she runs so fast that sometimes she falls down but she gets right up and brushes her knees and runs again as fast as she can past red houses and parked cars and bicycles and sleeping dogs and cartwheeling girls and rustling boys and Mr. Taylor's record store all the way to the corner to meet her mama. I'm gonna go ahead and read this poem one more time, friends. Go ahead and listen so that you can build a mental image in your brain. What do you see? What are you smelling? What are you hearing? What are you tasting? What are you touching? Keep in mind those five senses to help you build that image in your brain. When my friend Leslie runs, she runs so fast. I can hardly see her feet touch the ground. She runs faster than a leaf flies. She pushes her knees up and down, up and down. She closes her hands and swings her arms. She opens her mouth and tastes the wind. Her coat flies out behind her. When Lessie runs, she runs so fast that sometimes she falls down, but she gets right up and brushes her knees and runs again as fast as she can past red houses and parked cars and bicycles and sleeping dogs and cartwheeling girls and wrestling boys and Mr. Taylor's record store all the way to the corner to meet her mama. As you listen to the poem, what is it that you visualize? What did you see? What did you hear? Like Wednesday, I would like you to pick one of these three sentence stems to share your idea with your stuffy, your pet, or your family member. When you have an idea about what you visualize when you listen to this poem, give me a silent thumb up. And when you're ready, pause this video so that you can share your idea with your family member, your pet, or your stuffy. Let's do a quick check-in with our writing goal for today. We listened to a poem and we took the time to visualize what we heard. The next thing is we're going to be acting out the poem. We want to be able to move around the room responsibly. So I would like you to pick an area in your house, um, in your home, where it's an open space and you're not surrounded by things that might hurt your body and you don't want to be around where you can hurt someone else or something else, okay? We're going to stay safe while we are doing this. And I would like you to try these moves in one spot. So stay in one place, okay? And think about what the poem is saying. Okay, we are going to pretend to be Lessie. Here we go. We're going to listen to the poem and act out um, what we hear in the poem. When my friend Lessie runs, she runs so fast, I can hardly see her feet touch the ground. She runs faster than a leaf flies. She pushes her knees up and down, up and down. She closes her hands and swings her arms. She opens her mouth and tastes the wind. Her coat flies out behind her. When Lessie runs, she runs so fast that sometimes she falls down. But she gets right up and brushes her knees and runs again as fast as she can past red houses and parked cars and bicycles and sleeping dogs and cartwheeling girls and wrestling boys and Mr. Taylor's record store all the way to the corner to meet her mama. You have had an opportunity to listen to the poem three times. You've had an opportunity to act it out. And now I would like you to think, how does Lessie move in this poem? 
And when you have an idea, show me a silent thumb. Great. I see a couple of my friends with their thumbs up. I'm going to repeat the question one more time. How does Leslie move in this poem? And when you are ready to share, friends, go ahead and pause this video to share with your pet, your stuffy, or a family member about how Leslie moves in this poem. Thank you for sharing your ideas with your partner. We're going to go ahead and look for the words in the poem that tell how Leslie moves. And I heard many ideas come out of your conversation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find them in the poem. Okay. I heard some of you say that Leslie runs and that she pushes her knees up and down, up and down. She closes her hands. She swings her arms. She opens her mouth. Okay. And when she runs so fast, sometimes she falls down. So she falls. Those are just some examples of verbs or movement words that Leslie does in the poem. Let's go ahead and take those movement words that we just talked about and add them onto our chart. Now we know that Leslie runs. So I'm going to add that to our chart. She runs. She also falls in the poem. She swings her arms. And she pushes. Awesome, first graders. We have just added five new verbs to our chart that, we're going, that we are going to be using for our assignment today. Okay, friends, now you get to write a poem with me. This is what we're going to be doing together. I am going to choose a movement word or a verb from the list that we created this week. And then I'm going to think about what it's like to make that movement. I'm going to include details by using my five senses, my sight, my hearing, my smelling, my tasting, and my touch. And I'm also going to include a title in my poem. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to pick the movement word of verb, hop. Can you say hop with me? Awesome. Okay, so I want to write a poem about hopping. So what I'm going to do is I will start my poem by writing this line, watch me hop. And then I will describe what it's like to get ready to hop. So I'm going to write down, hmm, I stand on one foot and then I push off the ground. Okay, so now I'm going to think, hmm, well, what might happen next after I push off the ground? And what is that going to feel like? Okay, that's where I'm going to start including details by using my five senses. Going to think about what's going to happen next and what does that feel like? Okay, well, one idea that I can use when I hop is I feel like I'm flying. Another thing that I can use when I land is I'm going to make a sound with my foot, that one foot, and I'm going to say thud. It makes that thudding sound when I land on that one foot. So I'm flying, I land with a thud, and I'm still on one foot. Then I'm going to get ready to end my poem kind of like a closing sentence. And I'm going to write down, ready to take off again. Okay, I'm gonna go back and reread my poem. Watch me hop. I stand on one foot, push off the ground for a split second, I'm flying. I land with a thud, still on one foot, ready to take off again. Now, I feel really good about my poem. I think I've used my five senses to explain 
more details about my movement word hop. And now what I have to think about is what kind of title can I use for my poem? I'm going to go ahead and use the word hop as my title. That's what I'm going to call my poem because below that, that is where I'm going to think about and explain what it's like to make that movement. Friends, you're going to get to do this yourselves today. Let's get ready to do so. Friends, you watch me create a poem by using one of the movement words that we learned about this week in a poem. Now it's your turn to do this. Grab your writing journal and a writing tool so that you are able to write a poem of your own today. You are going to choose a movement word from the list that we have created. And I would like you to think about what it's like to make that movement, okay? Include details like your five senses. What is it that you're seeing? What is it that you're hearing? What is it that you're touching? What is it that you're smelling? What is it that you're tasting, okay? Make sure that you also include a title for your poem. And when you're all done with your poem, friends, make sure that you take a picture of it so that you can send it off to Miss Tapia or Miss Price or Miss Estevez when you are all done. Poets, don't forget that you can use your word wall to help you spell out tricky words. And you can also use your approximate spelling strategy by using your letters and sounds to build the word. Nice job, poets. Thank you so much for your hard work this week. You have done so much learning about poetry and you have created your first poem today. All right, my friends, we will see you all in Zoom class on Monday. Have a wonderful weekend.